There's nothing wrong with the way this creator solved the problem, just kind of squaring over and over again to get rid of square roots until we have an answer at the end. But it involves a lot of separate steps, and I prefer a different method where we think about what the square root is in terms of exponents. So to tackle it that way, we have to be aware of this particular equivalence, which is that the square root of something, A, let's say, is the same thing as the half power of a. This is the connection between roots and exponents. Roots are essentially fractional exponents. If this had been a third root, for example, instead, then this wouldn't be the half power of a, it would be the one third power of a. But it is a square root, and so we're going to use this half power idea to rewrite this expression. This is really going to be something to the one half, that is, this big square root on the outside here. What's the something? x times another big old square root. That's this second nested square root here, something else to the half power. What's on the inside of that something? x times one last square root of x. x times another x to the one half power. And it's all of this that ends up equaling seven. From here, I'm gonna plug in some exponents we didn't already place everywhere that we have an x. I'm actually gonna write an x to the first, and then I'm going to utilize our x exponent rules. When we are multiplying expressions with exponents, we can add those exponents together. So that inner x to the 1 times x to the 1 half is the same thing as x to the 1 plus 1 half power, which is x to the 3 halves power. Now that itself was being raised to the 1 half power, and I'm going to apply a second exponent rule. When we raise a power to another power, we multiply those powers. So x to the 3 halves to the 1 half power is the same thing as x to the 3 fourths power. 3 halves times 1 half is 3 fourths. Let's do a little housekeeping and go ahead and replace what we've evaluated so far. And we can see we have another application of adding exponents here. x to the first times x to the 3 fourths is going to be the same thing as x to the 1 plus 3 fourths power, that is x to the 7 fourths power. And finally, one more time, we've got another exponent to exponent situation. Power to power means multiply, so 7 fourths times 1 half gives us back 7 eighths, and this is the scenario we find ourselves in. Some unknown x to the 7 eighths power is equal to 7. For our last step to get this x by itself, let's do something that might appear a little bit strange at first. Let's raise both sides of this equation to the 8 sevenths power. The reason I've chosen 8 sevenths is that 8 sevenths is the reciprocal of 7 eighths, and by raising a power to a power, I'm going to multiply those reciprocals, which of course is going to cancel and give me back x to the first, which we typically write as x. On the other side, of course, we just have 7 to the 8 sevenths power, which we could either leave in fractional exponent form, or if we prefer, convert back into radical form. The denominator is the type of root we're taking, so this is a seventh root, and then inside that radical sign is the numerator part, seven to the eighth power. And so there you have it, x equals seven to the eight sevenths power, or alternatively, the seventh root of seven to the eighth power. Bonus points to the clever viewer, is there an interesting way to simplify either seven to the eight sevenths power or the seventh root of seven to the eighth power? I will leave that as an exercise for the viewer.